And greetings. Welcome back. I'm not starting with a picture of myself this time, but but uh, <laughs> I guess I could. But uh, it's kind of dark right now, <laughs> being nighttime. This is uh, first week in November, and something happened that happens every now and then. I ran out of my preferred black ink, this carbon black. And um, some interesting facets about this bottle. Sometimes they come with this cup. I've actually gotten them that don't have the filler cup in them, and that's kind of a drag. But it's not all lost because I simply opened up my other bottle and pulled out another bottle of carbon black ink. Now, the reason why I started thinking about this is because when I pulled out the second bottle of carbon black ink, I thought, hey, you know, I have these cheap Jinhao pens. This, I had a couple of these clear ones, and it prompted me, because they were so cheap, to buy this set of Jinhao pens. And these pens, this one had, uh, I used in another, I used in another video, it, uh, it uh, dried out. The ink eventually dries out because you know that they cost like a dollar and seven cents. I think is what these cost me because I bought a bunch of them at once. And uh, the other pens have all died. These are the only ones that are left. And of the clear ones, this is the only clear one that's left. It has a crack right here, like the others as before it. And eventually it'll crack up to about here, and then you can just pull the barrel off without having to unscrew it. And uh, the uh, little the little snap cap, eventually it, it will crack and split, and then it'll just fall off, and it won't keep the nib from drying out. And uh, even though there is a little inner cup, and they do meet up, it still, the pen still dries out over time. We could probably take this one apart and see what this ink did to the inside of this pen. And that's what I started thinking about. One of the nice things about these is you do get these uh, international converters with the pens, and... These are the having the converters, if you have pens that use international converters, that's worth the price of admission right there because those can be a couple of bucks sometimes. The reason why these pens crack is because the material that it's made out of is not particularly strong. They'll typically crack when you screw them together and go to tighten it. If you tighten it too hard, it'll just crack it right up. That's why this eventually cracks as well. The plastic just dries out and becomes brittle. So instead of being elastic enough to slip over this lip, it cracks. Now, this is the last of its kind, so it's going to go over here. But what I have are these five colored Jinhao pens. These have never been used. They are, um, in fact, this one, they've never been used, but this one already has a cracked, a cracked cap. You can see and you can hear how, how insecurely that snaps on. See, that's, that's what I mean. So e even though these have just been sitting here in this pen protector since I got them, I've never used them. That one already has a crack. That's pretty funny. Um, now, these Jinhao pens, very inexpensive. And uh, like I was saying, the other one that dried out. Now, we could take it apart. We could see what that feed looks like up in there and do all those. And that got me to thinking about the carbon black ink. One of the things that people really don't like about this kind of ink is it's a pigmented ink. It has physical particles of pigment in it, carbon. And when the liquid part of the ink can dry out in the pen, it will leave those particles or that particulate in the pen and it will clump. And another kind of ink that, that you can get would be like a dye-based ink. Now, this is a this is a permanent waterproof. I shouldn't say a permanent. I should say this is also a waterproof ink. This is Noodler's Eel. This is, uh, what is it, Black Eel or American Eel. This is, a, uh, this is a lubricated black ink. And this is a nice ink. I actually like many of the properties of this ink, except for one which I'll go into later. But these inks, along like this Diatramentus ink, will sometimes stick to the steel nibs. And if I don't clean it off, the next, the more I use it, the larger that area of stickiness will get, grows like a, like a, like a, um, what, um, like a glacier. It'll just get bigger and bigger. And uh, eventually, it, and it'll, and, and it never gets easier to remove. So that is one drawback to this kind of ink. 
And I thought it would be kind of interesting to see what happens if we take these five pens and we fill them with this carbon black, the American Eel, the Diatramentus, and I have this Higgins Eternal Black. This is not a permanent ink or a waterproof ink. This is actually a water-soluble ink that is safe to use in fountain pens, but I thought we could use it as a as a control ink against the other inks. This, this uh, is not the easiest to clean out. And I did notice that it had some clumping issues in the feed after about the third refill, but it was still manageable. I could still clean that pen so the pen would function again. It just, it took a lot of effort. So I know this one's kind of a known commodity. I know what's going to happen with that one if we put that in these, but still an interesting thing. But the last ink is a big no-no ink. This is my Speedball India ink, which is just for dip pens only. And in my youth, in my foolish youth, when I was doing a lot of music copying, I used to use dip pens for music copy, and I used to use Speedball India ink. It was one of the India inks that I would use. And I did have a, have a opportunity and foolishly put it into one of my uh, fountain pens that I had at that time. This is back in like 1988 or something like that. I put it into one of my fountain pens and it did a number on that fountain pen and uh, it was really, really unpleasant to get it clean, but it did, but I did get the pen clean. However, I also have to say I didn't leave the ink in it that long. Let's see what happens to these five pens if we leave that ink in for a while. And we can also take a look at some of the properties of these of these five inks before we do that. Now, in order to keep uh, keep tabs on it, I thought we would use a journal. But I think this one, I've written in this one already. I think I want to get a new one. So we'll take a nice new. This is a, a Clefontaine notebook. Brand new. Kind of nice. So we'll take this and we will fill these pens and then we'll write down some information about each pen. Then I want to put them back into this pocket protector. And when we put the pens back in, I think I'll orient the nibs down and the caps up so that the pens can sit in the pocket protector this way. But the ink will be pooled at the bottom of the, at the, bottom of the uh, cartridge converter and keep the nib saturated that the ink will eventually evaporate out because like I said these caps aren't the, are these caps like I said these caps aren't uh, aren't the best for longevity of your pen uh, the ink the ink still dries out pretty quickly as opposed to a, a higher class pen which uh, has less of that problem and we'll see what the results are you can take them out and write with them once in a while uh, these Jinhao pens are actually pretty decent for what they are. They cost a dollar, and you get a lot of pen for a buck. One of the interesting things about these pens, too, which makes them good for this little experiment, is they uh, got to take the converter out. So let me take the converter out. Always post your barrel. Put the converter in there. Now, these pens actually have a nib unit, which screws in to the section of the pen and it's a completely hollow section there's no gate in there where you can mount the cartridge the cartridge will you know there's a stop on it there's a, a shoulder but there's no uh there's there's no uh, nipple like i could write with a pen like this but um these are good for this experiment because they have this nib unit there's a little o-ring here and uh, these usually aren't that hard to disassemble and there it just comes right apart and like I said these pens are brand new they've never been used I don't even think I've cleaned these they came in the package and I just stuck them in here and uh, this nib unit only has one way that it can reassemble and so that'll make it a, a good experience this is a number five uh, Jin Hao stainless steel nib unit. I'm putting it in backwards. That's the reason why. There we go. Now, if I really wanted to make sure that this pen could seal, I could put a little silicone there. 
instead of just relying on that little o-ring to seal this up but I think this will be interesting so why don't we give this a shot let's get all of our pens ready so stitch in time now we're going to roll the rest of this video in fast motion from this point forward because my audio for some reason in places got garbled and instead of just redoing the video I decided for continuity's sake I would just uh, continue to play the video in fast motion and I'll overdub the rest of the audio. I was pointing out here that the cartridge converters on these pens are not the they're not the greatest cartridge converters but for what you get that's it's pretty good it's a copy of a Lamy cartridge con international cartridge converter but they are not fully disassemblable so they're not really serviceable now these Jinhao pens did have another issue the the uh, this one the the nib unit had a little rough edge on it so it wouldn't go onto the cartridge and I had to pull the cartridge out of the out of the uh, barrel of the pen using a, a little awl and then um, scrape it off so that it would uh, go onto the converter. And then I'm just taking the rest of these pens and disassembling them, preparing them to be able to start putting the ink into them. So number one is the green pen, which is going to be filled with this carbon black ink. And the filling technique that I use, of course, is to fill the pen roughly about halfway to bring the converter up a little beyond halfway so that there's ink sucked into the section and then turn the pen up and then by pulling the converter plunger all the way down it'll draw the ink out of the section and bring it to the bottom of the converter so that I can reverse the converter and push the ink back up into the section and force the air bubble out so I get a better fill and that's what I'm doing here. Now the carbon black ink again has microparticles of carbon in them. So as the over time as the liquid part of the ink dries out it will cause those particles to clump together and I'm going to write down the name of the pen the color of the pen excuse me and the ink that's going to go into the pen and then I'm going to make some lines that we can take a look at some of the properties of this ink. The carbon black is the ink that I use most commonly. It is uh, the ink that I like using the most in my fountain pens. I do have some issues with it being a little hard to clean sometimes, but it always comes out. Now the second pen I'm going to put the control ink in. This is a, uh, a Higgins ink. Now most of the inks that Higgins makes are for dip pen use only. This one is water soluble. I use it with a paintbrush once in a while. Um, it's a nice ink and it says it's safe for fountain pens, but it really isn't any good to put in a fountain pen. After about the third fill, it will really start to clump pretty heavily. In fact, I'm expecting that this pen is going to get the uh, veins of that feet are just going to get all, all gummed up with with particulate from this Higgins ink. You can see the clumpiness on the mouth of the of the bottle when I open it up. But this Higgins ink will be a good control to see just how much more difficult it is to clean the pigmented ink or the dyed ink or the uh, <laughs> the India ink out of a pen in comparison to this Higgins Eternal Black, which is a water-soluble ink. And it writes very smoothly. It has a nice saturated black. It's a, it's a nice ink, but it really is best for dip pens. The next ink that we're going to use is going to go into this kind of smoke-colored pen. This is a pen that I also had the trouble with the converter with. And uh, agitate the Noodler's American Eel. I like the American Eel ink quite a bit. I used American Eel for over a year and a half. And this, in fact, is my second bottle of American Eel. But I had an issue with this ink that I will uh, talk about in a moment that made me decide that I wanted to go back to the carbon black. This ink, 
again, is a very smooth running ink. It's got a nice velvety finish to it. It's uh, It doesn't have any reflective quality to it. It's um, It has kind of a, a, uh, a satiny finish to it. So when it dries, it, uh, it looks very black, which is a nice quality of this Noodler's American Eel. It's also a lubricated ink, so I'm expecting that it will perform very well over time in the pen in this test just because lubricated inks are meant to be able to withstand longer periods of uh, idling inside of a pen without being used. This ink writes very smoothly and the line is very dark and it's a pretty pretty decent overall water resistant black ink and I did enjoy using it. I still do use it once in a while. This now is the Diatramentus Document Black, which is the black that I keep in my daily use pen for doing things like writing my signature on papers because it dries faster than either the carbon ink or the noodler's ink, and I wanted something that would dry faster. But this is a dye-based ink, and it can be a little difficult to get out of out of the pen. I've never had any trouble with it clinging to the to the feed, either to a uh, either to a uh, plastic feed or to a ebonite feed but i have had it i have had issue with it clinging to the nib the stainless steel of the nib but it it also is a, this pen was not wanting to write very well but uh, this ink also writes very well the one thing i do notice about the diatramentus document black is that it it's a little more draggy i feel the pen drag just a little bit the nib doesn't want to want doesn't want to glide as easily across the paper i also notice that with this with this clairefontaine paper i have some hard starting issues with this ink sometimes depending on the pen it's very much dependent on the pen but um i don't have those issues with the same pen using the carbon black that I do with that pen using the diatramenta. Sometimes with these coated papers with the Rodeo or the Clairefontaine I have issues. Now this is the India ink. This is a dye. This is um this is the real this is the real deal. This is carbon suspended in like a lacquer and it is not to be used ever in a fountain pen. I know from personal experience. And even when I was opening this bottle, you could see that the little the little inner cap actually was glued to the top of the bottle by the ink because as the ink dries, it becomes very sticky, very gummy. It's a wonderful ink to use in a dip pen, and I really adore using my uh, India ink. It's a fabulous ink. It's black it's dark it it won't fade and when it dries it dries very hard it does not move at all but using a dip pen for some of the paintings that i like to do some of the images that i like to draw can be a bit of a drag because it the dip pens can be very slow and frustrating at times to use because they will they will blot at times and i did have trouble with this ink right out of the gate in this pen just trying to get it to write at all because it is a slightly thicker ink because it's made for dip pens. And so it didn't really want to run in the feed of this Jin Hao 991 with these number five nibs. It will work better in a number six nib because I've, I've, uh, I've actually done that. But uh, this, this ink being a little heavier doesn't really like to write in a fountain pen to begin with and if you do put it into a fountain pen it will it will dry up in there and being a, a varnish a lacquer it you can't get it out not without solvent and the solvent will in nine times out of ten will destroy your pen and ebonite feed sometimes you can gently chip it off but a plastic feed would just it, it just bonds to it but um it runs beautifully smooth it makes a great line it's wonderfully black and it is also very stable so i've got all the pens inked up and then i wanted to talk about some of the qualities of the inks first of all how stable are they underwater 
So I take my, I take a little paintbrush here and I go over each one. And you can see with the carbon black, very little movement. And with the Higgins, this being a, a water soluble ink, you can see that it immediately starts to lift and move. The Noodler's ink, it seems stable enough, but it does move a little. And of course, with the Diatramentus and with the India ink, there is no movement at all. It, it is very solidly mounted. But here is my issue with Carbon Black and the Noodler's inks. They smudge. The Diatramentus doesn't smudge as badly, but the Noodler's uh, American Eel definitely smudges. It's the most smudgy of all these inks. And the most stable of these inks, of course, is the India ink, but it's a, it's a mess to use, and you can't use it in a fountain pen. So these are the inks, and we will uh, we will find out what happens over time with these inks, and um, we'll set the pens aside and take them out now again, now and again, and write with them. I think in a, maybe a month from now, the first week of December, we will take these back out and look at them. So. Of these inks, I think the best performance is going to be the uh, Carbon Black, and then the Noodlers, the Noodlers, and the Diatramentus. But I think the inks that are going to really not do well on this test at all are going to be the Higgins and, of course, the uh, the Nono ink, which is the India ink. Again, the uh, the the Dia the Higgins ink like that Pearl Noir is a water soluble ink so I hope you find this interesting and well we'll see how it goes until then thanks for watching.